Hi everybody, my name is Michael Hope. I'm the Assistant Principal Bassoonist of your Calgary Philharmonic Orchestra and I'm really happy to welcome you here today. We are reaching the end of our concert season and because of that we'd like to recognize one of our musicians for his career accomplishments. Today we highlight the retirement of one of our most distinguished classical music stars, Principal Horn, Rob McCosh. Tell us, you're retiring after how many years in the Calgary Phil? 22. Wow. <laughs> I came here in 2000. Okay. Um, I want to talk about the beginning of your musical career. I'm always fascinated to know how people began playing their instrument. And can you tell us a little bit about how you came to choose the French horn or how it chose you? It was actually a teacher who chose it for me. Oh, okay. Um, Same with me in the bassoon. <laughs> right. I, I started on the, believe it or not, on the euphonium. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a new band director come in in grade eight. And he said, you know, we need horns. We need French horns. And I kept hearing all these horn players and, and you know, just missing a lot of notes. Like It's always the same way. And, it's, <laughs> and, and I just thought, you know, I could do a better job. And I was wrong. <laughs> it was very humbling. It's a very humbling instrument. My teacher in Germany used to say that it was possible to miss any note at any time on the horn. And he was absolutely right. He was one of the, the biggest star players. He was principal of the Munich Opera. Um, and he said one night he had an exposed first line F, mm -hmm. quite possibly the easiest note on the horn, <laughs> and he missed it. He cacked it. Huh? Yep. Why is the French horn so difficult? And why are the notes, why do the notes not sit comfortably any time? Our instrument, more than any other instrument, has the overtones so close that the valves are almost for show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we almost say that they're for show. If you cannot breathe mm -hmm. or taste that note, you're probably going to miss it. Tell us a little bit about what's awesome about it. What have you enjoyed about your instrument? I love the sound. You know, I love the sound. I love the fact that we have really good repertoire. Yeah both chamber music, solo, orchestral, uh, we get a lot of variety. And, it, and, it, and it's a great partner instrument because yeah. we get partnered with all the different groups of the orchestra. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if it's a fanfare, we're with the brass, yeah. but if it's, if it, we might be doing stuff with the strings or we might mm -hmm. be doing stuff with the woodwinds, you know? Yeah. And so we, all, we get paired, we're kind of like the, the blanket yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that everyone gathers under, mm -hmm. you know, to make a whole. So playing principal horn in an orchestra is, is of course, a job which has some of the most pressure of any instrument. And uh, you're kind of like, again, you're like the musical quarterback of the whole group sometimes. So what goes into being a great principal horn player? You have to be willing to put aside a lot of things in your life. Yeah. For sure. You'd have to make a lot of sacrifices mm -hmm. to, to get there because you have to put in the time. Yeah. You have to put in the time practicing. You have to put in the time listening to recordings, score study. Um, I never, during the, our summer hiatus, would ever take more than two weeks off. Mm -hmm. I never would. And I know that for some other players, you know, that was their time to put the instrument away um, because of physical or mental or both burnout. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just felt like I never could because I was too worried about trying to get back into shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there's a saying we have among horn players and that is if you skip one day, the section knows. <laughs> if you skip two days, the orchestra knows. Mm -hmm. And if you skip three, the world knows. You've been a great advocate for musicians' rights over the years. You served as the Calgary Phil's delegate to the Organization of Canadian Symphony Musicians. You've been the president of uh, the local of our musicians' union, and you've also been the chair of our Players' Committee. And, and why is this advocacy for players have been so important to you, and, and why is it important at all? I think that it's tough being an activist because you, once you put yourself out there, yep. <laughs> you're a bit of a target. Mm -hmm. But I felt that it was worth that sacrifice because I wanted to see that things were fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For fair for musicians. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I got involved with all those things off the stage. 
I wanted uh, a better life for my colleagues. And uh, yeah, and so that's why I became involved with the union. I, that's why I became involved with Oxum uh, on the negotiating team, trying to do what I can to see that musicians are treated fairly mm -hmm. and with respect and, and dignity. Okay, what are you gonna miss the most? I'm not playing. The young players. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And hearing them grow even more. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna miss that. I'm gonna miss certain repertoire. Yeah. I mean, there's certain repertoire that never, Brahms never grows old. Yeah, yeah, old. that's true. Brahms never horn grows player. old. He loved the horn. He wrote yeah. beautifully for the horn. Mahler never grows old for me. Um, and like I said, there's a few bucket list pieces, but not many anymore mm -hmm. that I wish I had played and didn't get a chance to. But um, yeah, great hall. Yeah, mm -hmm. love the hall. Mm -hmm. We've been lucky um, that way. Haven't we? We've been yeah. very fortunate. I, I, I love this hall. It's one of the best mm -hmm. I've ever played in. And, and certainly the colleagues. I mean, yeah. we all have our close friends in the orchestra mm -hmm. and I'm gonna miss them. Yeah. But, uh, Oh, we'll miss you too. Amazing. Oh, thanks. We've been talking about my milestone as in retiring, but every year, you know, we honor our these musicians, our great colleagues who have reached certain milestones mm -hmm. in their career, and you've reached 40 years, which is yeah. <laughs> amazing. So, how does it feel to reach 40 years? You know, I'm a Virgo, so like I'm really obsessed with statistics and milestones and things like that. So, now that I've come across the, you know, like the, the, if I'm looking at the spreadsheet, which is my life, now I've got like now there are four columns, <laughs> having played in a professional orchestra, and uh, now I'm happy and I'm proud, and uh, and uh, just having gotten to know well, great colleagues like yourself and, and great colleagues in the woodwind section, old and new. Um, it's, uh, it's all gone by in a flash, actually. Um, and I, I think it's funny, I think music kind of takes time in a person's life and turns into a big blur because part of me feels like I'm still a kid again because I'm doing exactly the same thing, playing the same wonderful stuff and channeling the same beautiful stuff that goes out from wherever through me to the audience. So, uh, so I, I'm, I'm proud, I'm happy, and we'll see how many more years uh, I have left to go before somebody's interviewing me for my retirement. <laughs> <laughs>Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, as we continue to celebrate beautiful live music in our community, it's been great to be with you today to share some stories about our great musicians. <laughs>